Hi everyone. This video is about operations with complex numbers, chapter 3, section 7. Now we're going to take a look at how to perform arithmetic operations. So the first thing we're going to do is plotting the complex numbers on the coordinate plane. We can graph them on the coordinate plane where we call the x-axis the real axis and y-axis as imaginary axis. Um, for example, the first question graph 3 plus 0i. So we find 3 on the real axis. Here we are. And go 0 units along the imaginary axis. So we are not moving at all on the imaginary axis. The answer is only on real axis. So our point will be here. This is our 3 plus 0i. The second one, 2i. There is no real part, so we are not going along the real axis. We just go along the imaginary axis, 2i units. So we will be here in this point. The third one, negative 2 minus i. We go negative 2 units um, along the x-axis in the re real axis x-axis is real axis in the complex numbers coordinate plane so negative two units in the real axis and negative i units in the imaginary axis so we go down negative i units down so we will be here and finally three units in the real axis we will be here and 2i units in the imaginary axis. So we go up how many units? 2i units. So we will be here. So this is how we plot the complex numbers in the coordinate plane. Now the second part is finding absolute value of complex numbers. You know what absolute value is? It is the distance from the origin to the point. So here I have origin. Uh, for example, for this question, 3 plus 4i, you go 3 units on the uh, in the real axis and 4i units in the imaginary axis. Here is your point. So finding absolute value of these complex numbers means find the distance between origin and this point by either using um, distance formula or forming a right triangle here and using Pythagorean theorem, which means we are finding square root of to find hypotenuse, find square root of sum of the squares of the other sides, 3 squared plus 4 squared, as we did in vectors topic to find magnitude. We were also finding square root of squares of the um, individual numbers here. So you don't have to do know, know these details. It is just for you to understand the logic of this formula. So we have absolute value, meaning we square real part and imaginary part. It doesn't matter if I write negative here or write it without negative. Since I am squaring it, the result always will come out as positive. So I just square real part. I find the square root of sum of the real parts sum of the squares of real parts and imaginary parts. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, square root of 5. So the answer always comes out as a real number. Because it's a length, the result is always real number. Like this, if there's only a real part, you just square the real part. Negative 1 over 2 squared on the radical, which gives you... Um, 1 over 4, square root of 1 over 4 is 1 over 2. If there is only imaginary part, just square imaginary part. Under radical, it will give you 23. Pretty simple. Let's move on to the following. Finding addition, adding, have to add and subtract complex numbers. So whenever you are adding or subtracting complex numbers, you just have to add the corresponding numbers add real parts together and imaginary parts together so i have negative three as real part here i don't have any other real parts just write negative three 
And what about imaginary parts? The imaginary parts are 5i and negative 6i. Add them up, it gives you negative i. It's pretty simple. And I just want you to be careful about the minus. If there is subtraction, you are subtracting a complex number from another. You have to distribute this minus to the bracket first. This is very essential. So 2i minus 3 minus 5i. And then you combine like terms. So how do you combine them? You use the real parts, which is negative 3 only. And let's work with imaginary parts, which are 2i and negative 5i. 2i minus 5i makes negative 3i. Like this. It's a piece of cake. And the next thing we are going to do is learning how to multiply complex numbers. It's just like multiplying um, expressions, binomials. You just have to do the distribution. You distribute uh, the uh, every term in the first factor by every term in the other factor. Let me try the second one. Let's multiply 4 by every term in the second factor. And negative 4i also multiplied by every term in the second factor. It is not 4 times 6 and negative 4i times i. You have to do this distribution one by one to every single factor. So 4 by 6, which is 24. 4 by i, 4i. Minus 4i by 6, minus 24i. Minus 4i by minus i, minus minus makes plus 4 i squared so here i have 24 combine like terms after this point um, first of all we have a power here what does this power mean with this i squared what was i first of all remember the previous lesson our i was square root of negative i negative i this is i i am squaring it so when i square it 2 and the radical will lift off so we are gonna left with negative i so i squared is negative i so write negative i instead it's gonna be then negative 4i right instead of 4i squared write negative 4i so 24 minus 4i minus 24i plus minus 4i so now combine like terms we just have one real part which is 24 imaginary parts combine them all together So here I'll have negative 4i, negative 24i, negative 28i, minus 4i, negative 32i, like this. Um, let's move on and learn how to evaluate powers of i. Um, we are going to try to write the powers of i in terms of a complex numbers with no exponent at all we have exponents here sometimes we have very large exponents we will get rid of those exponents and write it without an exponent um, let's start from the first power the per first power of i is i itself the second power, as we did here in the previous question since i is square root of negative 1 you are squaring square root of negative 1, which gives you just negative 1. i cubed, um, it can be written as i squared times i. i squared is negative 1, so negative 1 times i, negative i. i to the 4, you can write it as a power of i squared. So i to the 4th is i squared to the power of 2 you know what i squared is i squared is negative 1 so you raise negative 1 to the power of 2 which gives you 1 so i'm not going to explain all of the powers here they're all similar so all we need to know is if the power is even we are going to try to write it in terms of i squared you raise i squared to the power to find the powers the even powers if the power is even, you write this as i squared to the power of something. Since you know what i squared is, it is negative 1, it will be simplified easily. But if the power is odd, 
you can't raise it by second power so you have to rewrite it as i multiplied by i to the even power so that you can write i to the even power as i squared raised to another power all right <clears throat> okay 6a check it out 6a it's an odd power so we should rewrite this as i multiplied by you leave one over two in front i multiplied by i to the power of an even power so remember when multiplying powers um you keep the basis you add the exponents the exponent here is one to get seven the other one must be six so one plus six makes seven so you rewrite this as one over two times i times i to the sixth now since i get an even power here i can rewrite this even power as power of i squared so this is i squared raised to power three because two times three is six so i have one over two times i times i squared to the power of three so we know what i squared is i squared is negative one so by just using i squared uh, we can find any higher power that we can think of. We can reduce very high powers of i by just using i squared negative 1. So i squared is negative 1. So I have 1 over 2 times i times negative 1 cubed. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So result is just negative i over 2 then. All right. So what if we have an even power? This is simpler. You just raise the i squared by an even power. 2 by what makes 42? Divide 42 by 2. It is 21. So we are going to use power of i squared here. So i squared raised to power 21. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 to the power of 21. It's an odd power. You have negative number here. The answer will be negative 1 like this and the final operation that we're going to do is dividing complex numbers so in order to divide complex numbers like dividing the rationals we have to simplify the um simplify the given expression by simplifying i mean rationalize the denominator in order to rationalize the denominator um, we have to multiply denominator by the conjugate so that the result of denominator becomes real number. I have imaginary numbers in denominators. So to get a real number, I have to multiply the result by conjugate. We studied conjugate in the previous lesson. It is the quantity. <coughs> it is the complex, co complex conjugate is exactly the same quantity here, but switching the sign of imaginary part. So for negative i, what is the complex conjugate? It is positive i. So whatever I am doing at the bottom, I have to do the same at the top. Remember, if I am multiplying the bottom by something, I have to multiply the top by that something. Similarly here, what is the complex conjugate of 2 minus i? It is 2 plus i. I am just switching the sign of i. Whatever I am doing at the top, I have to do the same at the bottom. Um, you multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate of denominator. So for the first example, 3 by 8 i by i, multiply 3 by i, 3 i, multiply 8 i by i, it is 8 i squared, divided by negative i times i, negative i squared. Simplify it, get rid of the power, get rid of i squared, i squared is negative 1. i squared is negative 1. So I got 3 i minus 8 and here at the bottom negative negative 1 makes positive 1 so let me write this in, in simplest form write the real part first negative 3 and imaginary part or keep it like that it doesn't matter similarly let's distribute the numerator first 3 by 2 3 by 2 6 let me clean this it doesn't look good so here I have 3 by 2, 6, 3 by i, 3i, 
negative i by 2, negative 2i, negative i by i, negative i squared divided by 2 minus i2 plus i. Do you realize something here? What kind of numbers, what kind of numbers do we see here? 2 minus i, 2 plus i. There are difference of perfect squares. We can apply this expansion rule. Whenever I have a minus b times a plus b, I know that that's expansion of a squared minus b squared. So I don't have to do this distribution 1 by 1, 2 by 2, 2 by i, negative i by 2, negative i by i squared. I don't have to do this when I know that this is this um, expansion of a squared minus b squared. So just take first one squared, 2 squared, which is 4, and second one squared, i squared. I'm not doing this for others. I'm just doing this for difference of two perfect squares. I can't do this at the top. I can do this at the bottom because they are conjugates. They are difference of two perfect squares. Now, simplify. I can't leave my answer like this. I didn't reach anything. So i squared is negative 1. Here, i squared at the bottom is also negative 1. So act accordingly. So here I have negative, negative 1, positive 1, plus 6, 7. I'm combining like terms together. 3i minus 2i, imaginary parts together. So it is just i divided by negative, negative 1 makes positive 1, 4 plus 1, 5. So I just have a real number at the bottom. See, I have no more i, no more complex imaginary number so it's 7 plus i over 5 so it's better to write this as real part plus imaginary part so when you simplify complex dividing complex numbers you write this as a plus bi write this as real number plus imaginary number so what is the real part here the real part is 7 over 5 plus imaginary part is i over 5 so simplifying complex numbers means you write the result as real part plus imaginary part a plus b i form get rid of i from denominator <coughs> so we've finished complex numbers